Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, if you just joined us. Uh, that was the name war with Trickle on the Nang selection, you know, and um, fortunately enough, if you just joined us, you didn't know, but um, we have the lovely lady in front of us right now. Hey. <laughs> how are you? Hey, thou? thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Um, so how's life? Let's just start off like that. <laughs> wow, life is good and complicated, but mostly good. That was very concise. What, what, <laughs> um, why? Why is it complicated and why is it good? Because I think, I, I think about this quite often. I think a lot of people kind of don't allow themselves to experience the kind of full bodied kind of thing of life when, you know, everyone always wants to talk about the good things. You know, when you speak to someone, they always want you to say, I'm fine or like not everything else. Like when your auntie asks you what's going on, you just say, I'm fine, auntie. Yeah, yeah. But really you're ripping your hair out. It could be anything, but I think it's amazing. I'm, I'm kind of happy that I can feel the full spectrum of emotions or have loads of different experiences so at the moment i'm kind of semi freaking out that my album's coming out next next week <laughs> but in a good way as in like it's an I, excited I, thing i was but gonna say when when you say um what's the name of your album pardon me we used to bloom we used to bloom when you say we used to bloom it's coming out next week what across the spectrum what emotion did it start off when you said that up until today because I can imagine as an artist, you probably go through ups and downs. Like, oh my God, like the whole thing. So kind of, so basically, maybe like a few months ago, I got like the kind of full run up of everything. I didn't have a release date. So I was like, mm -hmm. not freaking out about it as much. And then when I got the release date, I was like, oh my God, it's actually going to come out. Like, and previously before that, I was like, I just want it to be out now. I just want it to be out now. And now that it's kind of a run up towards it, I've kind of felt... I don't know, not terrified, but it's kind of strange. I don't know. It's a good but terrified. It's, yeah, it's a good terrified. I'm mostly excited for people to hear it because it's such a, I don't know, it's so me, this record. It's As every, it should be. Yeah, but I think, um, I don't know, I think I've done a lot of growing up. I think my last record was like, you know, right when I was like 19 and, you know, I've done, you know, I've experienced a lot more and I kind of am more well read on things and, I think that reflects in the album. It's kind of like a wider spectrum of emotions and um, experiences that I'm talking from. So, um, yeah, I think even more so, I'm actually more nervous than I was for the first record. How long have you been sitting on these songs then? Not that, not that long. Like, I, I wrote quite a lot for this record, but um, basically what happened was, maybe like the beginning of last year, um, I wrote Trickle. Mm -hmm. And that was the first song that I really wrote from you know after taking a few months break from kind of all the other songs that i wrote so from there on onwards i'd say so basically from january last year to maybe like august august was the last i wrote the last two songs last year so not that old realistically are you it one of those just all just came are you one of those artists that after you've wrote it you're like oh this i don't want to hear it again this is old to me or do you listen to your own music okay. constantly i actually do all the time okay <laughs> not conceited or like I do, at all no as in i do it's kind of more from a different perspective just because i like i indeed my live show so i've had to be like listening to Sweet. it to like figure out how i want to play it live at the moment um and yeah i don't stop writing as well so i'm always like working on some kind of form of music like at the moment i've kind of dwelled into like a weird side project which is actually really random no, no, like i, I wasn't like really expecting projects. it is it who's it with is Myself. it under your name yeah no no i don't have a name yet but it's different so. i think that like you can have different artists name like to yeah all together yeah and again some of you off air then i'm really curious i like names so I've, i haven't got a name yet i haven't got a name can yet. i help you or yeah yeah w what's the angle how what's this angle it's kind of more like um it's kind of more like uh, beats and like instrumentals at the moment. I haven't written anything on top of it, but I just know that it's not from, from my own music that I've been putting out. Okay. But yeah, in in a sense, I feel like, you know, I'm always making something, whether it's writing, like, I don't know, just kind of poetry or verses or just chords or anything. There's always some form of like creation happening. So I find I'm always listening to something that I'm working on. So, so you, let me go straight. So you songwrite, you sing, you produce, you MD your own shows. Yeah. I presume you have um, control over how your visuals look as well. Yeah. So what time and space do you have for yourself to be a young <laughs> woman in, in London and be yourself? Like, where does that fit in? 
Um, mostly the weekends. I find Sunday's my day. It's actually just my day. Like I like spending time at home and like um, just see my mum and stuff. Cause she's quite hard working. So Sundays, Sundays, like weekends in general, I find everyone just tends to as well, just chill out and mm-hmm. not kind of email me. Do you me play music notes. loud in the house, like when you're cleaning and cooking or is it just Yeah, like, yeah. So what, what do you play on a Sunday? Ooh. Um, right now I'm really into like Nick Hakeem. Oh, do you know him? Cold. Like his, his new record's really good. So I've been listening to that quite a lot. Um, but I don't know, I kind of do this, the generic like... I don't know, I watch kind of what my w- mum watches on TV and stuff on Sundays. I watch like Sunday brunch. <laughs> Is that what your mum's on, yeah? <laughs> uh, gr- growing up, I presume your mum has been a big influence in terms of like what you watch on TV on a Sunday and what music you play, right? Wrong? Or were you not? I say my music influence more came from my from my dad. He was more kind of, he always had quite an electric, um, electric, eclectic, eclectic um, kind of ear for like music. So I grew up listening to, I mean, he's like a massive Prince fan and like Stevie, so he always kept me kind of in the know of all the like OGs, like the game and Mm -hmm. stuff, so. um, And um, I think the most impactful artist that kind of got introduced to was Lauryn Hill, like that that Unplugged session, I got it when on DVD. Do you Um, still have it? Yeah, yeah, I still have it, because I used to watch it whenever I kind of needed some kind of comfort. When I was younger, I used to watch it at home um, on my laptop. But yeah, he, he gave it to me like when I was 13, and I watched it and I was like, what? Like, it was the best thing I've ever seen because she was so raw and just like, she made kind of a few mistakes and her voice was kind of like a bit, um, you know, rough at times or whatever, but it was just real. I've never seen anything like it. It was still yeah. authentic. I know yeah, that yeah, word gets overused today, but at that time it was very much raw, sick talent. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that, you know, I owe my dad to kind of the kind of foundations of like, just music that, um, you know, that I kind of listened to when I was younger. So what what else will we put in the proverbial lifetime playlist of the name more? What else mm. do you listen to in life? I'd say, like, it's changed so much. I was definitely that person that went through all kinds of musical changes. Um, I'd say... Um, I'm a massive Kanye fan. Cheers, my guy. <laughs> I, I love him. Like, I'm really... A massive on on him and i think his career is really um something to admire just because he's always taken risks and i think that's like the most important thing as a musician is to like push yourself like on whatever you're doing because i don't see any point to be honest in making something new if it's not um if i'm not going to be like a better musician by the end of it or like you know so i think i admire that he challenges kind of his listeners as well because mm-hmm. there's always conversation about oh what's the best record from him it's never a straightforward answer everyone always has like a different one which i think is really cool i think conversation is really important about music um so i think i admire him for that i like risk takers like i like people that aren't afraid to push themselves and push you know everything else that's happening and also like take a step back from what's actually happening in music because it's so Come easy a different approach and yeah direction. it's so easy to like just i don't know want to recreate something that is like current or like um that everyone else is doing so i think it's really important to like always take a step back as well and just listen to what you want to make and like you know sonically just tune into whatever sounds are kind of happening in your head and then kind of make more sense of that if you get what i mean yeah when it when it comes just on the subject of kanye because I'm, I'm really curious as to how um you've you've taken him in is it more so his music and how he approaches music with the direction or even his personality as well Do, does that come across as um influential or inspiring to you or is it just solely his music i think as a person as well i think he's like really kind of misunderstood like i don't really i don't really understand this whole thing about him his vanity or like because i think it should be admirable like that someone can want the best for themselves on every single level mm-hmm. and want to get the things that they've always dreamed of getting and i feel like if he constantly said that he was like i don't know really massively like he hated himself or whatever no one would care i think it kind of definitely intimidates people that he's like so he thinks so not highly of himself but he kind of wants to be the best version of himself all the time yeah and i think that's life it intimidates people so that's quite yeah that's kind of that's why i really like him i really appreciate 
that kind of level of self-love because I think it's never something I was like taught to people I think people are always really afraid of like being borderline selfish or like borderline um I don't know vain or something yeah like when it's really you know what I mean like even when people think about they'll think about have to think about the way the politics and the way they talk to their friends about their ambitions and also like what they want to accomplish and, and stuff like it might make you have to be surrounded around the same people minded yeah people, that's or true you're going to be deterred in any element that's like, true yeah. but um but i don't know i think that's why i like him definitely sweet yeah you're sick i like it <laughs> um we're gonna play hours would you care to introduce it and tell us the premise behind it so Hours was a song that I just decided to randomly cover one day. <laughs> I re-listened to that Twigs album. But I don't know, yeah, I was going to say FK Twigs. Yeah, I re-listened to it um, and really connected with the lyric for this. So I just decided to do it and it kind of just came out like this. It was very, I don't know, it kind of happened by accident. But It's a beautiful accident. <laughs> Thank you. 